Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you 7 possible ways to free up storage space on your Android phone or tablet. This would solve the problem of low storage space, storage running out, or any of such storage related error messages you might be seeing on your phone or tablet. Low storage space could also lead to other related problems like phone being unusually slow or freezing from time to time. It could even cause apps to crash during use or not load entirely. So let's go ahead and see how you can reclaim some storage space and get your phone running smoothly again. So first, it's important to know that the procedures in this video are equally applicable even if you are not getting any storage space warnings yet. Actually, it's advisable to perform these space optimization processes from time to time depending on how you use your device. That will keep your device and apps running smoothly. So for this particular phone, you might not see a whole lot of storage space being released from some of these procedures because I perform these space optimization processes every once in a while. But if you haven't done them before or you did long time ago, then you might be freeing up a lot more storage space than would be seen in this video. Starting with the most obvious suggestion, which is uninstalling unwanted apps and games. This is definitely a good starting point because most of the files and data you have occupying your storage space came from one app or another. And on Android, when you uninstall an app from your device, then any data that the app has accumulated over time is equally deleted. So instead of going to first delete data and cache here and there, it might be better to first uninstall unwanted apps before going to clear data and cache for the rest of the apps. There are different ways to uninstall apps from your Android device. You can choose to go through the Google Play or Play Store. For some Android devices, you could even uninstall from your home screen. But the most convenient way would be to go through the app menu in your settings. So here you tap the settings icon and then scroll down to where it says apps. Tap to open a list of all the apps you have installed on your device. Here simply check through your list of apps to locate the apps you no longer need. Click on each app and then select uninstall to remove it. Another advantage of uninstalling through the app menu is that it provides you a list of all the apps you have installed on your device, not just those apps that have their icons on the home screen. And if you are worried about your paid apps, then it might interest you to know that any previous purchases from Google Play can be redownloaded at later date free of charge. It's also important to note that not all apps can be uninstalled. You will notice that most of the default apps that came with your Android device do not show the uninstall option when you click on them. Instead, you see Disable, Full Stop and Uninstall Updates. If you come across such apps and you don't really use them, then the best thing would be to disable such app and uninstall its updates. That way you are able to reclaim substantial amount of space from them and also prevent them from downloading more updates and taking up more storage space. The second suggestion is to clear up data and cache. Now the cache is basically a small sized volatile computer memory that provides fast access to frequently used program instructions, applications and data. Again, the amount of space you can free through this process depends on how frequently you do your cleanup. There are two possible ways to clean your cache data. You could go through the phone storage and you could also go through individual apps. For the phone storage method, go to your settings, then scroll down and select storage and USB or just storage depending on the model of phone you are using. Here select phone storage, then wait a bit for the calculations. Now go down to where it says cached data and select it. It then tells you that this will clear cached data for all apps. If that is what you want, then you can simply select OK to complete the process. But if you only want to clear cached data for certain apps, then here you need to select cancel and then go back to settings and select apps. And then from here you can select each individual app, tap on storage and select clear cache. Then you can go ahead and repeat the same process with as many apps as you want. The third approach would be to move movable apps to your micro SD card if supported by your device. 
Now, as far as releasing the most possible internal storage space goes and without sacrificing your data and apps, this could be the most effective solution for you if you have an SD card and your phone supports one. It doesn't have to be a 32 gig or 64 gig in size. With a 4 gig, 8 gig or even 16 gig card, you could be doubling up on your internal storage space depending on your phone model and that would be a huge relief on your internal storage. So here I'm going to use this 16 gigabyte SD card which is literally doubling my internal storage capacity. Now I will go to each app and see which ones are movable to the SD card and then move them. Now this app for instance doesn't allow me to move it to the SD card so I just let it be and check other apps. And here as you can see this app offers me the option of changing the storage used so I will select change here and then choose SD card from the options. Of course you will need to have your SD card attached to your phone whenever you are running the apps you move to your SD card otherwise you might get some error message or the app might not launch entirely. The fourth strategy would be to delete or move offline maps to the SD card. Now this is similar to the third approach I just discussed but there is a substantial uniqueness that comes with most map apps that needs to be understood before moving them to the SD card. For me maps take up the most storage space on my mobile device compared to any other apps this is because when I travel to a new place and I'm not sure how readily I would have access to the internet on my phone, then I would already download the offline maps of such places before the trip. And usually such offline maps could go anywhere from a few hundreds of megabytes to several hundreds of megabytes, even up to a gigabyte depending on the locations. Now some map apps allow you to have the app on the internal storage and the offline maps on the SD card. This sounds quite optimal but from my experience with this here we go map it doesn't really give the best performance. Sometimes tracking is substantially delayed and the cache keeps clearing up automatically when I relaunch the app and that makes it difficult for me to track the places I've visited. Now what I find optimal is to have both app and the map on the same storage. For the case of Google Maps I find it suitable for online navigation but not so much for the offline movements. Although it allows you to download offline maps, but unlike the Here app, it doesn't give you the option of downloading for a particular country or state. It uses some kind of cropping technique to cut certain areas of the map that you can download for offline use, and you can only cut this much space at a time. The good thing though with the Google map is that when you move it to an SD card, it automatically deletes the offline maps from your internal storage and download the same map to your SD card. Now it's advisable to perform this process when you have access to faster connection like Wi-Fi, otherwise it might take up a huge part of your mobile data and could take very long time to complete. The fifth approach would be to delete unnecessary WhatsApp media files from your storage. Now as more and more features get added to the WhatsApp app, it often translates to more and more data and storage space demand. And by default, WhatsApp stores every media you send or receive across the service. So all the videos, images and audio files you send and receive remain stored on your phone. Over time, this could become a huge collection of data that could choke up your internal storage. So you should definitely clean up these files from time to time, especially if you're a heavy WhatsApp user. An effective way to do that would be to use a file browser app. If you don't have one, you can get a free one like File Manager or ES File Explorer from Google Play. Now open your file browser and then navigate to internal storage. Then select WhatsApp, Media. Here you would find different media folders like WhatsApp Video, WhatsApp Images and WhatsApp Audio. When you click on each one of these, you will see a collection of the media files that have been received under each category and also the files you've sent under this category. Here you can simply select these files one after the other and then select delete to remove them.
Do this for the different category of media files and you could reclaim quite a substantial amount of space for your internal storage. The sixth approach would be to clean up media files and download folder. As you know, most of the data you have on your mobile devices these days are multimedia files, You're talking about video, images, and voice notes. So cleaning up unwanted media files could go a long way in freeing up your internal storage space. To do this, you will again need the file browser app. Open and navigate to your media files. Usually you will find them in the DCIM folder under 100 media. Here you can select unwanted files and hit delete to remove them. Now you can repeat the same procedure for the download folder and any other folders where you may have some large files. The final approach for this tutorial would be to change the storage option of your camera. Now this doesn't directly free up storage space like other six approaches, but it directs any future photos and videos you record with your mobile phone to the SD card, thereby removing the storage button on your internal storage. Now to change this settings, simply open your camera app and then select the gear icon to go to settings. Here select general settings and scroll down to where it says storage. Here you want to select removable storage and from now on any photos or videos you record will automatically be stored to your SD card. Hope some of these approaches were able to help you out. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Share with anyone you think might want to see. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notification on future tech support videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.